Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on how to build a dashboard. My name is Jeff Hainsworth, and I'm a senior solutions architect here. My goal today, as the title suggests, is to take you through building a dashboard from the ground up. But what I want to make clear up front is that I'm going to be taking on a very specific persona. I'm going to be coming in as the role of somebody who is a consultant, and I have very specific requirements that I need to meet. So the example that we're going to be going through today is one where one of our graphic artists have actually gone and created an image. And my goal today is to analyze that image and basically build a dashboard out of that, matching the branding, matching the labels, the colors, everything. So you're going to see a lot about how this methodology uh, would take place. The other thing I want to point out is that I am going to be doing this pixel perfect, meaning that I'm going to match the sizing exactly. This dashboard was actually built at a high resolution and is meant to go up on a big screen television. So we're not going to be doing any stretching or scaling, which the application does support. But I'm going to build this exactly the way it was described um, based on that graphic artist's requirements. And one thing I think you're going to be gathering from this is that you really should be dreaming big when you work with Dundas BI. Right? If you're on the business side of things and you're tasked to actually design how your dashboard is supposed to work before you get it in the hands of someone to build it. Don't think about so much what the tool can do, because the tool is flexible enough to pretty much do anything. Think about what you want it to do, and let the people figure out from there how to actually get to that step. So you're going to see that I'm going to be covering a lot of topics today. Right, from analyzing those visual requirements, as we talked about, to layout, all the way down to layering and theming and brushing. So I'm hoping today that you are going to learn a lot of concepts. And I, I can see that there is a question already. Uh, yes, we are a Canadian company. Uh, someone's pointing out that the spelling of colors in here is using the British style. So thank you. Uh, I'll, I might as well take this time to say yes. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat. I probably won't be able to get to all of them right away, but if I can, I will. But you can see that we do have a lot of content. But feel free if you want to email me directly at jeffh at dundas.com. You can see it at the top of the screen. And any questions that you do leave with us, we will get back to you. It just might come in a day or so. So with there a lot to cover, let's go right into the actual dashboard. So this is the image that was given to me by our graphic artist. Now, keep in mind, some things here are a little bit loosely defined. For example, you notice there's a couple of Mickey Mouse icons in here and repeated names. Well, what, the whole goal of this is that we want to see our employees. We want to see the picture. We want to see their names and their rev revenue values. So some of these things have been made up from a data perspective because it was simply drawn. It wasn't actually connected to real data. You also notice the odd uh, funny spelling mistakes here and there, but don't worry. That really isn't my priority at this point. I'm really taking this from a styling perspective. So I want to know the colors. I want to be able to take the logo. And I want to be able to build something that uses this branding exactly. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually come in and set up my environment. So let's go into Dundas BI. And I'm just going to log in using my Windows account. And let's go to the home screen. I don't need all these recently used. So this is th what you would see when you first start Dundas BI. So in this site that we've created, you'll notice that we have all these projects. And projects are a way for you to organize what you're building. So I have a ton of projects in here. But I'm going to go and add a new one. And I'm just going to call it Dragon Well. And you notice I can't spell. There we go. We'll make that the active project. And I don't need to worry about the permissions. So I'll just leave that as is. So we've now created a new project, and it's active. So if I go and build a new dashboard right now, and I'm just going to make a blank one, you'll see that I'm now in this Dragon Ball project. And everything you build, any data connectors, any of these elements that go into the dashboard are all stored in one place. So it's a good way to organize everything. One thing I see a lot of people doing when they've never used Dundas BI before is they all kind of use the global project, which is a great way if you have information that you want everybody to see. But sometimes you do want to isolate it and add security. 
So keep that in mind when you're building. You might as well build it in the right place to begin with. So first thing I need to do is create a data connector. So I'm going to right click and make a new connection. And the data for my dashboard is sitting in a SQL Server database. So let's just fill in the information. SQL Server, I got to give this data connector a name. So I'll just call it, I again can't spell, Dragonwell Data. And then let's just go find the actual database that I want to use. I believe we just called it Gallery Dragon. Well, there we go. So once I have that, I can just test the connection. You'll see it is working. If you need to fill in any extra security information, you can also do it here. Say OK. And now you'll see that my data is here and available. And I can now come in and actually see all the tables that we've defined. So that's the environment set up. Now let's actually, I'm going to introduce a tool that will help you understand how to take an image and actually do something with it to replicate what you're seeing. So myself as a background, I'm not a graphic artist. But I did find this really neat tool online called paint.net. And it actually lets you come in and edit an image file. So the first thing I wanted to know when I was building this dashboard is, how big is it? And you can actually see right at the bottom by opening the image. It's a 1920 by 1080. This, this dashboard is meant to go up on a big screen television. So that's the reason why we're trying to match it pixel perfect. So going back into our environment, let's make our canvas size. So if I go to properties and I just click on the background here, and I go over to the layout, I'm going to make it match that size of the image. So it was 1920 by 1080. And I probably want to do some zooming at this point because this is massive. And that might be the size that I'm actually going to be working with. Going back to the Paint application that I showed you. And by the way, you can use anything here. You could use Microsoft Paint. You could actually talk to your graphic artist and tell them to give you the colors and the dimensions. But it is up to you uh, what you want to use here. But just to point out what's going on here at the top of the screen. You notice that we have a logo. And there's actually three dashboards. And I'm just building the sales dashboard today. But as part of this, we want the user to be able to click on general. We want them to be able to go to the marketing dashboard or the sales. So this is common to every one of these dashboards. And the last thing you want to do is build this every single time. So the logo, the background, this line, some of these images you're seeing, these actually need to be part of the template, not part of the dashboard itself. Going back here, you'll notice that I actually built a dashboard when I created it. Just call it sales dashboard. But the first thing I need to do is really come in here and build a template. So let's just go new, new template. And you'll notice the environment is exactly the same. A template is basically just a special type of dashboard. So just like before, let, let's make this the same size 1920 by 1080. Zoom it out a bit. And let's start by doing some of that top section that I showed. So the first problem that I have is I don't know how big this white section is. And this is the reason why I'm using a tool like this. I can actually just use a selector. And you'll notice if you look in the bottom left hand side of the screen, it says 29 by 95. OK, so that white area is a 95 pixel header. Go back to our dashboard. Let's add a component. So let's add a rectangle. Bring that to the top of the screen. And to match it exactly, I know that the height is going to be 95 pixels. The width, I don't really need to worry about calculating because it's just going to fill. And I know for a fact that it doesn't have a stroke on it. See how the default has this blue line? I can just go and remove that using the properties. So it is very good to get familiar with these property grids. There's a lot of different settings that you can bring in here. Another problem is I don't know the color that's being used here. So this light gray, you can use the eyedropper in here. And you'll notice it tells you exactly the color. Actually, it's not a light gray. It's a white. It's my monitor. And it's a little bit light. 
So again, that would have been me making a mistake and actually using the wrong color just by the fact that I couldn't correctly see it. Back to our dashboard. I don't want to make that white yet because I wouldn't see it on the white background. But let's just go and change the background of the whole dashboard then because there was a gray area here. So this other section, let's use the eyedropper. And I can know that it's a 230, 231, 233 to be exact in terms of color. So I can go over here to my color picker. And I'm not picking a named color here. I'm going to go to the right, open the color, and just type it in. If I remember this correctly, 231. And then I can go back and change this rectangle to just be white. And that's the basis of what we had started. The Dragon Ball logo that you're seeing, let's hold off on that for a second. I want to know how big this line needs to be. Same idea. So I can tell that just by selecting it and looking at the bottom, 9 pixels. Good information. I've seen a lot of people try to build dashboards, and they do eyeball it. And let's face it, I'm a developer. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are as well. You'll never get it as good as what the graphic artists are doing. Right? These guys do this full time. So by cheating and using a tool like this, you can really match their requirements. Just going to use a rectangle again. Fit it. Go to the layout. Make it 9 pixels high. And then it's just 1920. Now the color, if I go over to look, let's get rid of that stroke that I talked about. I don't need that blue line. And using the thermometer again, I would actually be able to figure out what color that orange is. So I'll go to this tool, and there I go. 243, 134. Perfect. Just make sure that that's not offset. And you notice, you can see the position properties precisely here. Let's just make it exactly 95 pixels. I had dropped it with my mouse. So I'm being a little bit over nitpicky here, but I wanted to show you that you can really make this perfect if you needed to. Now, I'm not going to spend your time going through and figuring out the dimensions of every one of these elements. But I wanted to at least have you understand that you can use these other tools to figure out and make it perfect as you're building these. But let's go in and let's get the logo for this Dragon Ball. So I'm just going to drag and drop this logo from my desktop right onto the screen. And you'll see that it will upload it as an image. Let's put it on there. And there are various sizing properties. So if you click on that logo and you go to your properties here on the right under Layout, you can tell it how big it needs to be. So if I just tell it to be 100%, right, don't try to zoom it or anything. That's where I want it to be. And I'm just going to use my mouse cursor to make it touch the line. That's good enough for the logo. But let's go in now and add those labels, so marketing, sales, general, that were at the top of the screen. And these would be used for navigation. So label. Just add that as a component, but a bit bigger. First label is going to be left aligned, so I'm going to go to our text properties. Change the alignment to left. I believe it's 40 pixels, so we'll just make that the size. Can make that a bit bigger. In fact, if you center it on there, it'll appear exactly center. And the other thing is I want to use a different font family, so just to match it. You notice that if you click on Font Family, we list a couple of fonts in here that you can use. But if you have other fonts installed, it's actually possible to just type in the name of the one you want to use. So I'm just going to use a third party, again, spell it right, you, font. And that'll make it look a little bit different. The other thing I want to do, of course, is to change the name. So that's general. Oops, I don't want the space. And then the next one is at, let me get these positions correct really quick. So this is at 615. This one's positioned at 835. 
and then the sales one, the last one, that's going to be at 1100. So that's basically where we wanted it. Marketing and sales. Last piece of the dashboard that we were going to have was a couple of images and some text again just for certain features where we can reset the dashboard if they had set some filters and to indicate that there's a preview available if there is one. Just in interest of time, I'm just going to do the reset for you really quickly. So let's just drop the image on there, size it down, and let's just take this label just because it's already got all my font settings on here. And I'm just going to call this Reset Dashboard. Perfect. Shrink the font a bit for that one. Oop. And that's it. So that's going to be our whole template. The last thing that I want to add to this is that it does have that drill down capability. So if you were to click on any of these labels, it should actually go and navigate to that dashboard. Easy to do. Just click on it, go to your interactions, and say navigate. Now the only one I've actually defined so far is the sales dashboard. So let's just go in there, navigate, and I just tell it I want to go to that sales dashboard when you click it. So if I say OK, and I'm actually going to check this in. Check in basically means you're done. This is going to save a copy of it as it is. Check that in as there. And you notice if, I, notice if I click Sales, it's going right to my blank dashboard that we had created before. Let's resume this out like I was doing before. So that's where I want it. And I actually want to apply this template to the dashboard. And that's just an easy matter of going here to the top and saying Use Existing Template. And then you'll actually see template one, I didn't name it yet. That's what it was called. So if I bring that in, you'll notice that it's grayed out. But if I hit view, that's how it should look. So templating's done, our navigation system is done. That's all it takes. Finishing up this dashboard, now that it's actually using the template, in the actual image that we show, let me show you the screen really quickly, there's a slight sales text in here, as well as a label, just to show that we're on that dashboard right now. So since we want to show that sales, let's go to our components, let's add a label, or again, I could just take the one we've got existing. You also can build styles out of these so that when you build a label, it automatically will make it the same every time. Oh, that's coming from the template. A label will have to recreate this really quick. Just go to our there. Let's change the font family. And this should just say sales. And just in an enormous font. Let's just make it 100. Great. Put that there at the top. And if you look at the image again, you'll notice that it's got a little bit of a ghosted effect, right? Really light color. That's just because of a transparency. So all I need to do on mine is to go and set the color, the font color. So if I just choose this dark color, you'll notice that there's a brightness, but you could also choose how opaque it's going to be. So if you just make it a black and then start changing the opacity down, maybe 80 or 60 percent, you can start to get to that. I could also figure out this exact color, but that's good enough. I also noticed just looking at that image, I don't think I have the font installed that I was planning on using here. It looks a little different. I'm not going to waste your time in doing that, so that's why it's looking a little bit different. But that's the idea. Hit view. Now the dot that we were getting on there to show that we're on the sales dashboard. All we did there was add a component again, and we have an ellipse control just used to do a circle. Let's shrink that down. I'm just going to use the properties and the layout just to make it a really small 5x5 five five pixel Right, dot. Actually, that's too small. Let's try 25 by 25. That'll work. And just use the arrows to position that under sales. 
And the reason I'm doing this here and not on the template is because whenever you're on these dashboards, this is what I want to see. So on the marketing dashboard or just on the template, you wouldn't see these two pieces that I just added. Click on the ellipse, go to look, and let's just change the color really quickly. I don't need a fill. Oops, sorry, I do need a fill. I don't need a stroke. And it's just 243, 100. I believe it was 80. Oh, that's not right. I do need to check really quick. Ah, 34. There. So it does look a little different when I'm viewing it in the template because the template is grayed out. But if I go to view, you'll see it looks perfect as it brings the template into full view. Now we can actually start working on the actual layout part of the dashboard. You'll notice that we have a lot of frames being used in here right? for each one of these. And in Dundas BI, there is a frame control. Go to Components, find the frame, and bring that in. And then it's just a matter of, like everything else, position it in the correct place. And then we set the properties to make the color correct. So the height for this is supposed to be 177. It's supposed to be 39 pixels from the left. 40 is fine. I'll be close enough. And the width, 924, 12. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to style this frame first. And then I'm actually going to save it as a style so that other frames that we create, we could reuse the style that we're going to be building. So that's certainly something you can do. So with this frame, you'll see that ours has a white, what we call this the title height, or sorry, the title, what's the name, sorry. Oh, just the title instead of this blue. So there's some properties in here. You could change this if you wanted this to be some kind of different color for the title. That's up to you. In my case, it's just going to be a plain white again. And I do want to add a border this time. So let's just go in there. I want it to be one pixel wide, so something really small. And then it's just going to be a gray. So it doesn't really matter what I pick here. I also want to set this color for the entire border. So let's just copy it again. And you'll notice that there's a frame border, which I can just put in. And again, let's just make it small. So that will work. That could be the frame that we want to use. The last thing I need to modify is just the height. So this text area that we've got in here, it's just too small based on the diagram that I'm trying to reproduce. So let's go to Layout, and you'll notice that there is a Title Height property. So I'm just going to make it an even 50 pixels. That's perfect. Now, if I wanted to reuse this, if I wanted to just drop another frame on here without going through all these steps of recreating everything, it's just a matter of going in here, right-clicking, and saying Save Style. And you could apply a style to any visual. So you can do this to charts. Remember when I was copying those labels and pasting those on? I could have made a style for those. And once you create enough styles, you can actually put them together and build a theme. So in order to save a lot of time, you might just have a theme created for your corporate standard up front. And as you start dropping these controls onto the dashboard, you don't actually have to go and do what I'm doing and building everyone step by step. I'm kind of belaboring the point here because I do want everybody to see this over and over again, just for the learning stand of it. But just be aware that that's possible. Let's just copy this frame and very quickly position it to fill the rest of this. I think I've got one of my numbers off because the sales one is a little bit covered. So let's just move this down a bit. You'll get the idea. And just finish this up by adding the second and third, sorry, third and fourth frame. And some of those sizes. I think I resized that at one point, but there you go. Now our dashboard is pretty much ready to start having some data put into it. In order to do the data, let's actually go and create something called a metric set. But I'm just going to really quickly 
bump this over. By the way, if you're using keyboard nudges and you hold control, you can have it jump by five pixels uh, in either correction as you hit the arrow. So it's a really nice shortcut if you're not aware of that. But let's go to our Explorer, and I'm going to build something called a metric set. And what you need to understand about metric sets is that every single data visualization on a dashboard is powered by a metric set. And your reason for using these is because you might want to reuse some of the data. So I'm going to go over here to my data source. I'm going to find the quotes table. I'm going to build a very simple chart. So I'm going to actually start by creating this one here, which is one of the easiest. So it's just going to show total sales by lead source. So let's take the agreed price from our quotes table, drop that on, and you'll see that that adds a measure. So that's the number that you're seeing. And I want to break that down by marketing channel. So I take marketing channel and I add that into rows. It just gets me what I want. The last piece that I want from there is I actually want to see it broken down by our different products. So slicers are used for filtering. Columns are used for putting data this direction, so basically breaking it apart. If I were to change this into a bar chart, which is ultimately what we want to see, and then I go and I add to the columns the actual product. So I'm just going to go over to our product table here and take the SKU. So just be the product SKU. You'll see that it's going to break it up into different series. That's essentially all I want to do for this. But again, the reason I made this a metric set is because I want to be able to reuse this data. Maybe I need to put this on another chart, or I have some business users and they're building their own dashboards, and I have a library of these metric sets that they can just really quickly add to the screen. Not everybody has to go through the same process that I'm showing you right now. There's actually a lot of different ways that you can use Sun SBI. But let's just call this sales by lead source, or by, sorry, by channel, what am I saying? Check it in. Say OK. And once that's created, if I go back to my dashboard, use the recently viewed. It's a great way to get there very quickly rather than navigating through your dashboards. So let's go to our sales dashboard. And let's just shrink that down again. Oops, shrink it down in edit mode, not in view. A little more useful. And you'll see that I can take that metric set that we created and I can just drag it onto the screen. So put it somewhere, and then just position it the way you want it. So that might be what I want to see. Once I've got that, I'm going to click here and make it horizontal bar. So there is a quick button here that will allow you to flip it. And then, of course, I need a label. So let's go in again and add a label to this, which I'm going to add directly to the top here. And like before, it's just going to be called sales by channel. And then like before, use styles. It will make things a lot easier. But let's just bump up the size here. Perfect. Since we've got this chart on the screen, I'm going to very quickly click on it. And let's go to the look and define the color palette for this. So these colors that you're seeing in here, in this order, so you notice if I change the order, it changes the order of the bars. That's how it's going to style it. So I'm going to build the one, I'm going to save this as a style, and then we'll reuse it for our other visuals. So just really quick, I'm going to enter the fill colors here that we used uh, from our graphic artist. So there's the gray, which is the first bar. Second bar is going to be that orange. So there. And last two. I don't really need to define the whole palette in this case. I don't think we're going to run into any cases where we have more than four series. One more. Oh. Perfect. So now that's going to be the color scheme that we're going to use. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to save it. So let's just go to Styles, Save Style, and I'll just call this Chart Style. And that's it. So now when I go and build this pie chart that's supposed to be here beside it, 
I'll just be able to apply that style and I won't have to do it over and over again. Building the next visual on the screen, that pie chart, let's go to our data again. And instead of building a metric set this time, I'm going to show you that you can actually build these on the fly. So if I just go directly to our data, and I'm just going to go to our quotes details, I'm going to take that whole agreed upon price thing and drop that onto the dashboard. And you see in doing that, sorry, I dropped it too early. <laughs> Let's move that over here and reposition. There we go. That creates a visual. And right now that visual only has a single number, which is that agreed price. But you'll notice if I open the data binding panel here, it's building this thing called metric set one. So I'm actually using that metric set designer right here in the dashboard on the fly. So it really is two options. If you know you're going to reuse a lot of these, you probably should go and build metric sets. Right? Then other users can drag and drop and use it. But if you're not, and you're just doing something quick and it's a once-off, right, just some discovery, do it right on the dashboard. But let's take the agreed price, and I want to show that by the different product SKUs that we have. So I go to my products, let's take that SKU in to the rows. And of course, I should probably revisualize this to actually be a pie chart. And that gets me the basics. And I'm actually going to add one more thing to this. After I show the different rows, I also want to know which products are audio and which are video, just as another layer. So let's go to our product group and take the group name in as well. And for those of you who are familiar with data, you can realize that as I'm grabbing from different tables, Dundas is actually doing the joins right on the fly. So that's a multi-layer pie chart that I just created. And let's just go over here and apply the style that we just built. So styles, apply, our chart style. And now I have the same color scheme as we were using before. Then just to finish this off very quickly, let's take the label, put it here on the frame. By the way, frames do have their own text properties that you can set, but I've just copied it well, just to be quicker on that. So this is sales by SKU and product type. I'm going to need more space for that. There you go. The next chart that we're going to do would be the one here in the top right. And this is supposed to show a revenue over time compared to previous year. And again, in case of my data, I can get a lot of that directly out of the quotes field. So the first thing I want to know from the date issued, uh, I want to see the actual dates as my x-axis. But in the actual data that we have, we're just showing all the raw data. Let me show you. If I drag date issued onto here, and I tell it to show the price, this is just the date over time. And it may be recorded at the day level, the year level, the month level. It's going to show whatever the most basic level is. So I'm going to turn this into a line chart really quick. And there's a lot of data in there. I would want to aggregate this. That's basically what I'm trying to show you. Because there's a lot of information and it's fluctuating every day. That's not the greatest visual. But this would look a lot better if I were to group it at the month level. So instead of just taking that date issue data directly, I'm going to open up it and you can see that we can organize the data. In this case, from year to month to day. Let's take that piece onto the dashboard instead. And again, I'm going to grab that price that we have for each one of them. How much was it sold as? And now you can see I'm actually grouping this yearly. Let's just turn that into a line. Something like that. So even though my data had a lot of the raw detail at it, you can still get at it and organize it quite nicely. Now, I think this is a little bit too low level. So let's just hit View. Let's right click and let's drill up. Oh, I meant drill down, sorry. Let's drill down to 2008. Let's show it at a month level. And then from there, let's go and let's add something called a period over period. So I want to see another line that goes backwards one year. So you just set it. And you can change this if you want it back a month or something weird like that. It's up to you. But there you go. Now I get two series, and I can see where we are this year versus where we are the last year. 
from a data standpoint, this chart is done. All right, now let's just finish up the styling. Let's apply the style that we created already. See, that'll change the colors. And part of the requirement here was that one of these was going to be a bar and the other one's going to be a line. So there's two ways you can do this. You could click on properties and then go find your two series in there and then find the series properties. But you can also click directly on the chart. So if I click on that series, you'll notice that it selected series two. And if series two is supposed to be a bar, I can just change it. So it is possible to just go in and do it directly. Now, I've actually changed the wrong one here. Um, it probably should be the bar being the other series, but it doesn't really matter. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go to the Z index property. And I'm actually going to put the bar behind. All right, you can see that it's actually putting it behind all the series now. Right, you might also want to do something like this. Right, the line should come forward and reset that Z index so that it's not sitting behind the grid. That looks a bit better. Right, so you can change the position of all the elements in the chart. There's hundreds of properties there that you can explore. But when I was talking earlier about pixel perfect dashboards, even the visualizations themselves have enough control that you can come in here and make something look any way that you want. I know that I'm kind of keeping it simple right now by just talking about colors. Another thing you'll notice, see how it's labeling the first series in each of these? Same as with these charts, right? You can see the skew, but then it doesn't show it again. And the reason it's doing that is because this chart doesn't currently have a legend. So if I go to my data visualizations and I add a legend control, I'm just going to hook that up to chart three. And you can have one legend working off of multiple visualizations. So let's put that there at the top. And you can move it around, right? If I want to center this a bit better, I certainly can. But you also notice that these names aren't very nice. And the reason for that is because my database names aren't very nice. So the dashboard is just picking that up directly. And there are properties in here you can change it. If you, again, click on the series, you'll see there's a legend text property. So this is sales last year. And if I click on the line or go to series one, this is going to be say, total sales. So you can certainly clean up the names if you want it to be something a little more friendly. Also, right now, the fact that this is left aligned, I'm actually going to change this to be right aligned and then give it a little bit of padding there. And you'll find that'll look a lot better. Let's beef up the font a little bit, maybe not that much. And then, of course, get the label on here. So this is just sales versus last year. And there's one neat thing that I wanted to show you. The reason that this is currently showing 2008 is because we've set it to do that. But what happens if this chart, maybe as you know, time is going on, you want this to always be up to date? If you go into your data binding panel and you edit the date in here, you'll notice that there's a to from date. And sorry, just to be clear, the reason this is set is because I went into view mode and I specifically drilled down on 2008. Dundas BI, when you're editing and viewing, kind of treats it as the same thing. You can go into view and make changes with the intent of saving it. Now, it is certainly possible, don't think of you know, every user coming in here and having their changes automatically applied to everyone else. It doesn't have to work like that. But when you're in this view mode, there is a bit of a difference between the view and edit where you can come in and make those changes. So what I'm doing here, I'm actually going to change this. Instead of just being hard-coded to always show 2008, maybe if I change this to all and I say, okay, that's going to show all our data. But what if I just want to see last year? Let's go in here. Now, I don't have data for last year. You can see I'm 2009. This is a pretty old data set. So let's go in and let's tell it the start value should be the beginning of the current year. But again, I just said that's not going to work. So let's go to advanced and let's say take the beginning of the current year and minus 7. That's 2009. 
and then the end is just an open-ended barrier. So what this is going to do is it's always going to be a floating data view. So as time goes on, it's always only going to show the beginning of this year, or in my case, the beginning of seven years ago, and it'll always shift forward, keeping your dashboard relevant so that you can build this once and then not have to go and constantly recreate everything. So these are very useful features uh, within the parameter itself. I think you're really going to like the next visual on here because I'm going to add a lot of interactive elements to it. But let's first get the metric set created. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to build a chart and that chart is going to have multiple metric sets in it. So this is more complex than the other ones that I've shown to date. So let's start by just putting a bar chart onto the screen. Set the size, that's fine. And the way this is supposed to work is we want to track the number of downloads, then we want to see the number of those downloads that has converted to a quote, and then finally, how many of those quotes actually result in a sale. So in order to do that, we simply go to our downloads, let's take that in, and let's group it by date. And specifically, I'm going to start this at the year level. Oh, let's move that over there. And right now I don't have a measure in here, so it's just kind of giving me one for each one. But you also see that I don't have in my data set a count for the number of downloads. But what you can do, if you click on measures, you can just add a special type of calculated element that we support called count. You see I'm putting that in, I can see the number of downloads that took place each year. Once I've got that, I'm going to say add new and I'm going to build a second metric set. So this one now is going to have everything to do with quotes. So we go over to quotes, and just like before, let's take our year, let's drag that in, and let's show that the count. I want you to notice, though, that the chart didn't actually add the extra series here. And that's where bindings take place. Metric sets are for the data, Bindings are what we do with that data in the visualization. So you can see in here, I have a Series 2 and a Series 3. But the Series 2 doesn't have a horizontal bar position set. Right, series 2 is that new series tied to the metric set that I just added. Because the chart wasn't sure what we wanted to do with this second metric set that we added. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tell it to show date issued as part of the horizontal position. And that's going to give me this other series. To add the third one really quick, let's go to Sales. And again, I want the payment date as my date that I'm putting in here. So let's add a third metric set. Start with payment date by year. So I'm combining data sources here. And I want to see the count. And then let's just set the binding so that it knows that I do want to actually show that by the date. So there you go. That's the start of this visual. So you can see our conversion ratio is pretty good. You have a download, and the number of quotes to sales are actually extremely high. But I want to see this using three different visualizations. So let's start by showing the first series. Let's click on that, and that should be an area chart. And then the second series, that one's going to be a line. And then the third one is just going to be a bar. And then, like before, of course, let's apply our style to it. so that we get the consistent color scheme. So that's how we want to actually see the funnel. But now on top of this, I do want to add quite a bit. Let's get a legend in here, just like we did before. So we go to our legend, add, group it to series four, and I'll come back here and rename these later, just because it's all saying count measure right now. But the neat thing that I wanted to show you is because we've organized this data by year and it's using that dimension, as a viewer, if you're looking at this dashboard, you can actually right click and you could expand or drill down on specific years or right click and collapse it. So there's actually a ton of control here. I could look at either the downloads, the quotes, or the sales in isolation, drilling down on those from year, month, down to day. 
Um, or I might want to do something custom. So I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to add a label. And this is one of the requirements that we had as part of this dashboard. This label is basically a button that lets me drill down and see the funnel. And when I say see the funnel, I mean actually see it as raw data. So I just want to match the font size here, font 18, okay. A lot of people don't realize that you can use labels as buttons. If you go in here and you start changing some of the, the colors here, if I change the background color, for example, you can go in and maybe I want something quite a bit darker where they can click on it, just so that it looks different. You could do that as a label, or you could actually use a button directly. And buttons have various advantages, such as the ability to have hover over colors automatically defined and things like that. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to add a layer to this dashboard. So add layer, and this is just going to be funnel view. And I'm going to take that chart that we just created, and I'm going to move it into its own layer, and then hide it. So you see, I can actually just see it in isolation if I wanted to as well. You can hide the base content. But let's just position that in the right place, so something like that. Close enough. Hide the layer. And then I'm going to use the Funnel button in order to show the layer. So let's go to Properties. And if someone clicks it, so I'm going to go to Click, I want to change layer. So I'm just adding an interaction here. And that interaction is I want to show layer 2, so the Funnel layer. And if I hit View, and then I click it, you'll see this going to show it. Now the only thing that's a problem right now is that other chart is in the way. So there's two things I could do. I could put that chart in another layer and toggle it, or I could probably just cheat a little bit here and change the background. Right? If I make that a white background and then I size the two visuals so this one completely covers it, it would never be an issue. It's something like that. A lot of ways to approach this. I don't want to take too much of your time spending it styling these <laughs> multiple elements. But that's all it would take. And if you wanted to maybe add another label, sorry, where's the label? There it is. And maybe I wanted a close button on top of it. I can take that and I make it a giant X. Make that a bit bigger, bring it to the front, and actually it's in the wrong layer. There we go. So now I get this X. So let's go to my properties. Let's make that quite a bit bigger. Something like that. Shrink it down. And I can now use this label here in order to control the collapsing of the layer. So I'll go to properties again. Go to click. And then I can change layer again. But this time I'm going to just hide the funnel layer. Hit view and now I can very easily toggle it. So I have my own interactive feature in here. Just quickly, let's finish up that legend just for completion's sake. So downloads, let's make it an S. Second series is quotes. And then the final series is going to show sales. Get our label on here. That over there. Perfect. Now let's add even more to this chart. Let's add some filtering options. So I'm going to go to filter at the top. And the first thing I want to do is add what we call a level filter. And the idea behind this one is it actually allows the user to choose how we're aggregating the data. And you see that when I did that, it went in and it set it to month by default, and the chart changed. So it broke it down monthly instead of yearly. And by the way, the way this works, this filter binding panel, you can see every chart, gauge, map, whatever you've got in your actual dashboard. And it's just a matter of checking off which ones you want the filter to work upon. So in the case of mine, it's actually working on a lot of these. 
I don't want that. I actually only want it to work on charts four and five. So that's the hidden chart and the one that's actually being displayed right now. And now you'll see, of course, if I go to view, mm -hmm. if I come in here and I set it to the year view, it will go back to where we were before. So you can allow the user to decide what they want to see. Along these lines, you might also want to let them, let's do a calendar range. And this one allows them to actually come in and do a to from date. Let's get that out of the way so you can see it. So maybe they only want to see 2008 and 2009 at the day level. So they could set all those parameters. And just like before, I'm just going to check off which dates this is actually supposed to apply to. So that's chart five, and this is chart four. The chart four is the one visual. As a best practice, you probably should be renaming your visualization types just so you can know what it is. But I'm trying to cut some corners here in order to save a bit of time just so you can see everything. So very easy to get lots of interaction onto the screen. You do have a ton of control there. So I know we're very quickly running out of time, but I do want to build the scorecard for you very quickly so you can see it. Now in order to do that, what we wanted to do was actually show salespeople and basically the revenue that they have brought in. So let's go down to this, the actual quotes. And actually, it's the quote details we need to look at here. And specifically, let's just take the agreed price on here again. So that's how much was sold for everybody. But I want to know information about the sales rep particularly. So let's open the sales rep table and let's get their name. Let's take that in. So that's broken down all their sales per person. And then from there, let's make that a bit bigger. I want to actually see their picture as well. So if I go here and I add directly, you can see that there's an image. Actually, I need to pull it directly from here. So let's take the image and let's add that as another row. So there's two things it's doing right now. You can see the image is encoded. It's actually coming from the database. So if you want to use that, I'm just going to actually turn off our totals really quickly. I don't want to see these alls showing up everywhere. So I'm going to go into the metric set and I'm just going to turn off totals. I think that'll be a bit easier for you to see. There you go. So now we just need to take this image and I'm going to convert, actually I'm going into the bindings and I'm going to convert all of these into something called columns rather than row headers. So if I say display as flat here at the top, you see that it moved the bindings. So before it was trying to do that drill down where you could expand, I don't want to see that. I just want to see it as is. And the last thing I need to do now that I've got the data and the bindings set up for this, I just go to my properties, I go to image, and I'm just going to change the column type to image. You'll see that's actually going to show everybody's funnel directly. And in here you'll notice you can change the order. So maybe I want to see their name first, then I want to see their picture, then I want to see what they sold. And let's tell it to fill the area that I used to make it a bit bigger. So something like that. And the user will actually be able to scroll and see everybody. And so if I go down here, I can very quickly get to each one of those. You might want to also do some formatting on these numbers. All right, four decimal places when we're talking about half a million dollars isn't the greatest thing to be doing. So let's go to our bindings and let's just open up agreed price. And you'll notice that there's a format string in here. And actually, as I moused over for a second, a tooltip popped up. And that will tell you how you can format these. But I'm going to tell it currency, so C, and zero decimal places. Say OK, and you'll see it does the formatting. Let's just actually make this a little more flush right to the frame. Expand it to fill, just so we use up all our space. And I was going to add another different requirement to this to make it a little more interesting than what we had in the image. So let's actually go in here and I want to take the quote date by month. So 
So I'm going to see what these people are quoting. Sorry, I'm actually taking the wrong table here. Let's go back to sales. I want payment date, actually. Let's show that by month. Bring that in. Give me a visual. And I want to know specifically how much was sold. So I can actually just take the agreed price and bring that in because these tables are linked. So that's the sales for everybody right now. Let's make that align really quick. So that's the team sales. But let's go in here and add something called a slicer. So these are used for filtering. And if I add the actual sales rep name into the slicer, I can actually hook this up so that if I click on one of these, it'll automatically filter the one on the right. So let's do that. Let's go to our table. Let's go to data tools. Oh, sorry, let's go to inter interact interactions. And let's do a filter interaction. And you basically just tell it, what is it taking? So I want to take column one. Again, I should probably name these better. And I want to send that into a parameter. So you see it generates a parameter automatically. So I want to take the sales rep name, and I want to push that into our parameter value. So there I've done it. And you'll see it automatically generated this parameter. It's exactly the same as the screen you saw when I was doing filtering. So you can see chart six is being filtered now by sales rep name. But if I hit view, and I come in here and I click on Britannia, you can see that it filters for her data. And that's for Christopher. And I might even want to show their name automatically and do things like that, which you can certainly control and add. Again, just finishing this up, let's add sales reps. And there you can see the whole dashboard starting to come together. Now, I know I've covered a lot, and we are getting pretty much to the end of our time, but I do want to add something kind of cool to this very quickly. So I see two things that are pretty neat you could really quickly add to this. Let's first go and add a formula. So add formula, and a formula is just like Excel. You, we have various functions that we support. I'm just going to bring in the trend formula, and I'm going to show that over payment date using agreed price. That's a trend. And now I can see how each individual sales rep's trending over time. Let's change our legends really fast. And then, of course, actually add a legend. So there's sales and trend. I won't spend time resizing these just because I am getting very tight on time. And the last thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually control formulas on the dashboard, which is something that's really cool. So I'm going to start by adding a filter to the dashboard. Sorry, slider. And there's our slider. So let's just move that down. And then I'm going to add a quick formula to this. So just to make something up really quickly, let's take the price and let's just multiply it by a fudge factor. Maybe we're trying to show what the reflective of a change in discount would have been. Maybe if you discounted 20% less, you would see the difference in price. So I'm just going to multiply that first series by a placeholder. So I say OK. And you'll see it added a new line here. It's zero right now because that placeholder is currently set to zero. Well, let's go in here and let's find our expression and let's hook it up to the slider. And I can control the slider, the default values, the min max. But you notice now as I start changing the value of the slider, that other series value changes as well. So you can actually come in here and do what we would call what if analysis in order to see how things would have changed based on various conditions.
And now with that slider, you of course have a ton of properties where you can change the way it's going to look and what text it's going to show and things like that. So I won't bother configuring this right now. But I hope at this point you've got the gist of just how powerful this is. I've taken there's essentially a screenshot and built my own dashboard out of it. Now, unfortunately, there was a lot more that I was hoping to show you, including some questions. But we're going to have to leave it with that because I do have to end at the top of the hour. But if you do have anything that you want to send to me, uh, feel free to send me an email at jeffh at dundas.com and I will be happy to help you out directly. But I hope that you found this useful. Uh, hopefully you can use this for your own needs and actually be able to go forward and build your own fairly complex dashboards. So with that, uh, thank you very much and I really appreciate everyone coming.